So this is my Piper Cherokee 140. And we're out here today at in the maintenance bay. But we're gonna change the oil. Now what's kind of one of the things that's unique about my uh, airplane is that rather than having a screw-on oil filter like most, mine has this guy, which is a is an engine uh, oil pressure screen rather than an oil filter. Um, and most of the videos that I've seen on YouTube on changing oil on an old airplane like this uh, have an oil filter, and I thought I'd uh, make a video just showing the difference when you have an oil pressure screen. Hopefully, at the end of the next annual, I will also have an oil filter. So while I am in position to be able to show this, I guess I will. So we are right now trying to drain the oil. You can see that it is coming out right here via this tube, and this tube is connected up into that little um, connector right there. Now, what we did before we even got to this point was we, um, and by we, I mean me, I went and uh, warmed up the engine uh, and so that the oil will drain a little bit faster. But even with warm oil, it still takes a little while to drain. So while I am waiting for the oil to drain, I have to come over here. See that thing with the little plug on the end of it? That is my um, oil pressure screen. That contains a, a little screening element in it and a gasket, and I have to take that off and um, clean out the, the screen and inspect the screen for any large pieces of metal, and then replace the screen and put it back. After annual, I'm anticipating that I will put a, uh, an attachment on there that will let me have a spin-on oil filter, which will do a much better job of um, filtering the engine oil for me. And as a consequence, I will go from needing to change my oil every 25 hours of flight to every 50 hours of flight. So we're over on the other side now, and um, when I take this uh, oil screen um, housing off, there's a bunch of oil that is going to drip out. And so what I did was I took an old empty oil container, you can see some of the oil still in it, um, and I just cut a hole into it. And my plan is to see if I can stick this thing under here to try and catch some of that oil. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to. Maybe we got to cut, uh, cut a hole on this side out as well. Let's try that. I'll be right back. So we've cut this piece out of it. Let's see how well that fits in there now. Yeah, that's much better. That is much better. We will be able to get that in there and catch a bunch of that oil from making a mess down at the bottom. Okay, so I've managed to remove the um, screen housing. And this is how much of the dirty oil that I was able to catch. And that's how much I missed. So that didn't work very well. Okay, so the next step is we got to take this little screen out. Anyway, we take the screen out, we're going to start inspecting it for metal. And this is for you guys. Ooh, what is that? Those are bubbles. Those are just bubbles. Those are not... So this is just for you guys. I will actually inspect this with my eyes. Um, but right now, it looks pretty clean. So this part's a little dirty, messy, because I was trying to put it on, but I thought I'd film something before I did that. This is a gasket that goes on here and sits in between the engine housing and the filter screen. You are looking at the single least expensive um, repair item in general aviation. I think this thing cost a dollar fifteen. It's unbelievable. There are things in general aviation that are still reasonably priced. Anyway, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to stick it on here, and then I'm going to take this whole thing and put it back on there. Okay, we've got the oil temperature um, 
probe back installed and essentially the oil is all drained out including the stuff that hit the, the ground and we're ready to put more oil back in right there. One thing I forgot to mention is that the very first thing we did when we started draining oil before we even hooked that tube up there is we took a little sample of the oil and we're going to send that off to Blackstone Laboratories for analysis. And this is the oil we're putting in. We are putting in seven quarts of Phillips 66 um, 20W50 aviation oil. We'll put in seven quarts of that and one pint of CamGuard. CamGuard is a uh, engine oil supplement that helps prolong the life of the, life of the engine. So that's quart number one. Six more to go. And if you're wondering what these sleeves are that I'm wearing, I have them on both my hands, on my arms. So I heat up the engine um, in order to uh, <clears throat> make the oil run out a little bit more uh, smoothly. That basically the idea is to heat up the engine oil. And so uh, I do that. And what these things do is protect me from the hot engine. Um, and so that's why, why I wear them, because I have to reach down in here, for example, to get to this guy. And it's really easy to, to accidentally burn yourself. I found that out the first time I changed the oil. Okay, so we've got all the oil in, but now we got to clean up our mess a little bit. Down here and in here, because we got to go uh, run the engine and make sure that we don't have any leaks. So we're going to do that. So I just finished my run up and I'm looking for any sort of indication of a leak. And I don't see any on this side. We'll go over to the other side. And I don't see any indications of leak over here either. And But we're not done yet. While we're at it, we're going to pop off these wheel pants and make sure that we have proper tire inflation. So this is what my wheel looks like without the engine pants on it. Compared to that, to that looks a little bit weird, but you can see we're a little bit low. This red line here, this is approximately where we're supposed to be. And we are less than 20 PSI. So we're gonna fix that. So I'm back home now and I realized that I forgot to do a little sign-off video after finishing the maintenance on the airplane. But that is some of the uh, preventative maintenance and oil change, uh, inflating the tires. That's part of the privilege of having a private pilot's license. And I say privilege because when I was a student pilot, I couldn't do any of that. I had to get an AMP to sign off on any of that. So I'm actually quite happy that I uh, am able to do that on my own airplane now. Anyway. Um, that's what it's like changing the oil with a oil pressure screen and uh, thanks for watching hit the subscribe button below and we'll see you in the next video